Hello everybody, I'm Tyler Edlin and welcome. If this is your first time here, I'm a professional concept artist and illustrator and I do a fair bit of, of instructing as well. Now, if you find yourself struggling to get your work done or just simply being creative, at the capacity that you want, whether you may find an image too challenging to do or you simply get bored with it and your work lies mostly unfinished, this is a video for you. So really my goal here is to help boost your creative productivity by talking about different types of flow states, how I go in and out of them, what sort of strategies that I have used over the years to keep my workflow up, or just for anybody looking to help with their tasks that are uh, cognitively demanding. And folks, the summer of portfolio is here. If you already haven't, uh, all you have to do is click the sign up link over on brushsauceacademy.com. It'll take you to a little landing page. And in exchange for your email, I'll send you an awesome chapter one of the PDF guide on building a portfolio. It's gonna have all this awesome stuff for you guys to kind of check out and I'll be rolling out the other two parts for members that sign up uh, as soon as I have the time to put them together. All right, make sure you hit the one at the top here. All right, you kind people, flow state. What is this exactly? Um, you know, it's like when you're working or performing a task and you're just so absorbed in it, right? There's like an intense, amount of focus uh so intense that right it, it can i know at least for me right it can kind of lead to that sense of ec ecstasy or you know that's an extreme sense of clarity where it's like almost everything kind of slows down around you You're, you don't realize time is passing by because you're so caught up uh in the moment um and but you know exactly what you want to do from moment to moment right it's just all flowing together i guess um you know, like if you're playing like a high level sports or if we're looking, we're watching like professional sports, I'd imagine this is what goes in, you know, in the mind of like an athlete when they're like playing a high level game. They just they don't even think about the movements, right? They're just kind of following their body. Um, that's what I'm referring to. And of course, as creators, we can do a similar thing. And I think it affects a lot of us very differently. I know it, it kind of comes and goes with me. I, And I'll talk more about that. I, you know, I have friends. Like Jess, she she does like long eight to ten hour stretch, stretches of like this deep flowing work, and it takes her that long, and she can benefit from like those longer hours. Where I'm quite the opposite, and I'm sure everybody is also in between and in the middle of that, those two extremes as well. Uh, I find often enough with like my own work and stuff that I I can I can get into that. Uh, basically when my mind is hitting the right amount of challenge for my skill set um it it's like if you if you do things like too comfortable or too predictable or too safe for yourself right you kind of get bored with things it, it, it's just you're going through the rhythms and the motions of it but if you add in the fact that you know if you're doing something a little bit uncomfortable if you're getting uncomfortable with that and you're trying to push, you know, your own envelope, you know, like a little bit further in that regard, then it's like you're you're adding something into there and you're you're still getting all those dopamine drops, like those little moments to to moments, you know, areas of success that I think it works really well for me. I I know that's kind of what I do when I'm trying to like learn a new project or or something and I'm trying to integrate it in. Um but I think this happened most consistently for myself, like in, in, in 2021, when I was learning to integrate like Blender and VR into my paintings, you know, I was doing the same subject and genre that I always did. I was kind of building worlds in scenes and I was, I was, I was very, very used to that. I could do that. You know, I've been doing that for like 10 years. So I'm, if I add like the new 20% into that, I'm just throwing out a number, um, where I just like, okay, let me change how I solve that problem. This is still the same problem. So I, I was often getting into the, the flow state during that month or that week. I remember working on those, working far later you know, than I typically do. And it's just, right, I'm switching things up enough that I was kind of getting in there and making that work, you know, for the most part. So one of my big takeaways kind of coming out of art school, you know, as I was 
trying to transition to a more professional level of work was that I had to basically be comfortable with being uncomfortable because it right I'm there's always a sense of challenge there there's very specific goals to solve but I'm doing enough familiar things that I'm not entirely like you know trying to reinvent the wheel or getting uh, a task that's so complicated right it absolutely just is overwhelming and I think that's what I see a lot of you know with students uh, from project to project is they don't they don't know where to start or they know like most of the fundamentals and they just haven't figured out a process or a method of stringing those together in a a sequence you know that is constantly pushing the work further uh, I see that a lot all right so they'll like work you know too late or they'll work on something and they'll end up redoing it and redoing that because they weren't in a flow state or they didn't have enough in intuition at the moment to make the best call for uh, the project, which I think that can happen to a lot of us. Like I, I know I've been there. Uh, but this is why, too, like a lot of us stagnate or we don't grow at the right intervals or at, you know, maybe we do something we're comfortable with for just far too long. So we can kind of tune out and just go on autopilot which that that's kind of getting in the zone. I think it's a little different than flow state. I'll, I'll touch upon that a, a little bit later. But yeah, I think constantly adding the right amount of challenge is a huge part of the recipe for getting into a state of flow and performing deep, meaningful work, especially when it comes to creative stuff. And so I know a few people were asking, okay, like how do we get into a flow state besides that are there any other major methods well I think there's there's basically you can break this up into two specific categories right there's internal methods and there's external methods internal methods right are these are everything in your own head space right we we often enough get in our own way some of us can never get out of our own way entirely right and it leads to other problems down the road um, but it's mental stuff these different triggers right so sometimes and, and we and we know when we're in a flow state right we we get in these areas right when we're we're playing music sports or even video games right uh, and like i said the first thing internally is just being know yourself so that you can be comfortable with being uncomfortable um you want those rushes those little small rushes of pleasure <laughs> this is why i know for me um as I was saying, I could definitely get into these periods where I play like a video game for many hours. I think a lot of us do that, especially like with recent titles like like Elden Ring and stuff like they're they're hard, but they're just hard enough that I keep coming back for more. I could survive moment to moment, right? You get to a boss, you get white, you learn, you go back, you try try to do better then all of a sudden, right, like three hours goes by and you're like, shoot, you know what I do. So the trick is like, how do we apply that, right, to the work, like I was saying. Um, but it's it's essentially because of that chemical in our head, right, the dopamine. And it the, the thing with dopamine, right, is it, it I've read, I'm not a doctor, <laughs> it amplifies pattern recognition, mood, and motivation. These are all massive, huge things and factors, and contributors, right, to getting in a flow state. And you'll be much more likely to get into the rhythm of doing that really good, sweet work with those um, mental components, let's say, right, all in a play. So, like, I know, like, when I personally do some of, like, my best work, for example, um, and, I, and I'm just kind of, my, my hand can't keep up with my mind this is this becomes like another sub problem in itself it's like my mind can start to visually connect and and know exactly what it wants and if i try to rush my hand to to kind of meet the need of what my mind was is telling it to do it's not going to come out right so i have to consciously tell my hand to slow down we'll get in a little bit more on the, that uh, in a bit too like the technical side of it but speeding up and slowing down, essentially, it's it's that energy, right? And what you're drawing, what you're creating, that's a huge that's a huge factor of it, right? Uh, some some artists out there, I forgot who, maybe it was Adam Adam Duff, even he he might have referred to that as your tempo. That that is a huge part of it too. 
but right if if you know what you're working and you you could start to see the shapes and they you you can get to the basically the results with quicker lines or not quicker lines but in in fewer strokes that could right you're not redoing things you're not drawing over the same thing 10 times to do it that'll ultimately make you in a better mood which ultimately affects your motivation but i mean you could just go into things entirely motivated too without having right like a huge raw amount of technical skill at a point and that still will carry you pretty far. So, you know, try to always have goals. I think having goals will help that motivation. I, that I've always been a goal-made adverse, a person personally, and I think that's always contributed to me getting things done, whether I was in or in in or not in a flow state. Um, so more on like the external methods. These are things. These are things I think people more commonly know and associate with this sort of thing and that is things like around you it could be minimizing clutter that I've, I've talked to this on the channel before i've had to really and i actively still try to maintain a decent workspace because if i get surrounded too much in the thick of you know especially by friday at the end of the week and i you know i need to clear it off over the weekend because things just build up the sticky notes the leftover pens the cans of caffeine drinks empty glasses wires that have got pulled out and headphones like it it turns to chaos very quickly and that affects me i know that affects my work ethic my motivation and my mood so it's like it's affecting something internally from the outside that's what i mean by it sometimes it can be the noise upstairs i know even like when i'm teaching and this this can't be helped i'm gonna hear my kids you know, acting up upstairs, and I start hearing my wife start getting upset and frustrated with them. And that, you know, it just interrupts my mental state of flow. Like, and it's something I can't help for the most part, aside from like spending 30 grand and building a full soundproof office, which obviously is just not an answer. <laughs> it's not a solution I can feasibly do right now. But I'm part of all of this is me learning to deal with and learning to cope with my own limitations and restrictions. Uh, we all have them, right? They, they kind of come in different seasons of life and in different ways. So if you, if you can learn how to you get around them, I know which is very general advice overall, but like that, that's a huge part of it. And, and I think that that also just kind of goes with being a professional and, and, and thriving in almost any career, right? It's like you just show up, you'll get things done regardless regardless you know within reason of course these external factors that that will slow you down um so of course just minimize distractions in general shut off your phone right getting rid of notifications avoiding social media don't go on youtube don't <laughs> close out steam this is why i don't play video games on my my high-end pc because it's like i can't i can't play where i have to work essentially and, you know, I have to go to a separate room, you know, play the PS5 or the Switch. But if I do all that at where I work, I'm, I'm multitasking, which becomes, you know, in, in a problem in itself. So other parts of these external elements of flow state, I think, that, that I know I do in different ways, and they definitely help me, is like defining boundaries. And by that, I mean, like, specific times to be productive and not productive. You just can't be productive, like, you know, 7 -11. like I do recommend and, and endorse the idea of taking breaks as I'll get into as uh, you know even more um, but having periods of time like I have family time I have time you know I'm gonna spend with my kids with my wife every night at 9 p.m. me and my wife like to watch like a half hour show every day from 5 to 7 I spend it with my kids you know it's more time than that but, you know, there's certain times that, like, there's just no work and I don't try to be productive by then. I don't try to multitask because everything's going to suffer if I do, right? But it's good and it's healthy to have designated areas of being productive and not. That, that will technically lead to it. So now I definitely want to go back to the technical side of flow state. This is where, you know, we'll, we'll call it, you know, that the speed or the, the tempo side of, like, again, the benefit. This is what happens if you're in a a state of deep work or flow state right it's 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 basically speeding up right and slowing down for peak intuitive 
ability. Again, athletes are the easiest kind of example to, to set for that. They run, they stop, they turn, they pivot, right? They catch the ball without even thinking of it. They just do it. It's all intuition. Uh, it's all muscle memory in a sense too. So uh, I like to call it, because right? I am I'm, I'm do more painting than drawing. For me, it's painting with energy. I try to add a certain you know, take part of the rougher sketches or part of the gesture drawing if you draw a lot of figures. And if you write, whether you're doing a minute or a two minute gesture, often enough, if we turn the two minute gesture into like a two hour drawing, right, it loses some of that energy or some of what originally made that sketch look good. Um, this is, I think, interconnected to, to kind of the flow state of things. And just like, if, if you realize that things generally kind of stiffen up or if you overwork them, if you, you know, slow down and speed up your own act of making brush strokes and marks, you could achieve things with less work, less redoing, less hesitation, right? This is all things that build confidence. Having confidence definitely helps achieving a state of deep work. Um, it's just like that careful place placement, right? Of like these artistic principles that all kind of come together whether you you know them like a hundred percent or you think you know them a hundred percent or you just you're just kind of starting to to dabble in them you can still achieve basically flow state whether you're a professional or an amateur we don't have to be masters of everything you know for this to really work i feel but it, you know another way of looking at this too is just design itself right it the design of your picture right is just filled with solid technical ex execution overall that it, it's really about all those hidden underlying structures and rhythms that we generally just feel appealing you know it's like the shape of a mountain or the way the line swoops under a curve or like the way that edge gets lost over it's like it's kind of it's technical stuff literally but it, it doesn't mean it's like i said it's masterful or like there's just like an ebb and flow to the work as a whole and i do spend a lot of conscious consciously spend a lot of active time and when i'm working on a piece thinking about that stuff and and of course now i'm starting to notice more so now even doing this for like 15 years almost that it i can do it quicker and more intuitively through muscle memory alone because i can just get in and out of that 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 flow a lot better so you know experience does help but if you think about it you could try to channel that in you know from an earlier stage i i would say i think on that note getting in the zone i was kind of briefly touching upon this earlier it happens more so by chance and, I, and I, I feel this usually happens more so after a period or duration of pro <laughs> procrastination. You know, like if I'm like, a, I'm just like anybody else, I get like addicted to a new video game or I've spent all morning in my lawn doing my garden because this time of year, I'd much rather be doing that than, than drawing. It's, it's procrastination because I know I have to do work and I keep putting it off. Even like this video, I had, I had the idea that I wanted to do it for like two weeks and I put it off to the last possible second because I was trying to build a new wall in my yard. It's, it's, a, it's a form of procrastination, but like after this, like when I'm sitting down and I'm doing the very demo you're seeing now, um, I'm in the zone just kind of painting it, getting it done. Um, I think deep work by itself is, uh, you know, per, compared to generally just getting in the zone is more intentional and desired. So like, again, sitting down always with a specific goal with maybe something resulting in a piece of or body of work that has measurable gains or results. So I think you can get into the zone with anything. And a lot of that, you know, if, it's hard to measure or truly gauge whether that's good or bad work in some cases. But like I like to think of doing deep work as very intentional and something desired. It is not much of a difference, but you know I saw it come up in the in the topics that I was talking with you guys, and I thought I just wanted to touch upon that a little bit. You know, it's it I I like we could think of it like this. It's not just getting in the zone and then obsessively just working or noodling for the sake of it, right? Have you guys ever just sat down, particularly again after a long day? You work on something, you spend like two or three hours on it, 
just kind of like zoning in, probably detailing. Most students I see just try to go to the detail way too soon or they make big changes to things that they later regret changing. And I think a lot of that is because, they, again, they did too much work in the zone where they're not mentally in tune and too much on autopilot from procrastinating. Um, and they have to go back and redo the work. So it's like taking two steps back, one step forward. Uh, that happens a lot um, with some students I see. So I, I would say, because this happens to me after I procrastinate or work long hours, my personal fix is shorter bursts of work or simply working altogether when I'm not tired. Very rarely do I work beyond, you know, 10, 30 at night. I know like once I get to 1030, my mind, it just checks out. So if I force anything, I often regret it the next morning. Now, like I'm sure a lot of you, I do feel the struggle with, you know, getting in a f flow state when and where I want to, right? Um, it's part of the season of life I'm in. It's very chaotic. I don't get to block out six and even four hours of time that I need to because when I can do that, it's just too late, like I said, and then it's I can't even work then. So I've been able to train myself, again, getting to know yourself and your habits. This is largely a huge part of this and working with it, right? Working with the circumstances you're dealt with. That's a huge part of it. Um, I'm always getting bombarded with things and they do prevent me from achieving the conventional or traditional deep work that I used to achieve, right? Pre-kids, like 2015, 16, I could just sit there and grind out ideas. I could three sketch, you know, three scenes a day, three, two characters and turnarounds. I could just crank it out. No distraction. So now I get around that by prioritizing, outsourcing, and of course my nannies. They help me keep my boat afloat. So do, you just got to do what you can at the end of the day, regardless of what that is. So let's, like on that note, let's look at what some of the motivators of that flow state is. Um, now, I think you can get by just fine, as I do often enough, without achieving truly deep work, right? Um, but not a day does go by, I know, where I'm not trying to improve some aspect of my life. Are you guys like that too? Like, you know, are there you know, do you try to always better yourself in some specific way or another? I mean, it could be as simple as just going to the gym and getting, you know, an hour of exercise a day. It could be, you know, cleaning or helping something else, something you know, really fulfilling. Um, I'm just motivated overall in that regard. I'm always trying to improve something, whether it's directly in me or not, I guess. Um, it's so even though I try to get things done, it's just chaotic and limited now. So I do want to, beyond just me being motivated, I want to break down more conventional motivators um, in case you're just not a very motivated person in general. So one of the first things, and I think more so this applies for lots of students, is curiosity, right? We don't, if we're curious about something, genuinely interested in, in, in learning about something, right? This is like free motivation right we just we want to go in there we want to figure it out we want to sort it and it, it's we don't really have to pay attention to it because we just naturally already are right it, it's curiosity is great and it's also built into like number two here right which is passion itself so if you're curious about something and that will lead to something you end up be, you're becoming kind of passionate about whether it's you know, lifelong passion, or maybe it's this moment to moment, like I'm really passionate about learning this technique, for example, that brings a large amount of energy and focus for free too. It becomes almost like an obsession. Like, if we've ever been in a relationship, right, like that, the honeymoon stages of a relationship are exactly this, we're just really obsessed and always thinking of this person. This can happen to work and techniques Maybe it's software or subjects or genre you just discovered or you found a new appreciation of, right? You just don't have to think about it. You're naturally already like just getting self-obsessed. So that, again, can be a trigger from curiosity. And again, it's all very free motivation to do things. Um, but something, you know, arguably better than passion, 
why, and this is a huge one. I've kind of been talking about this along the way is purpose, right? So if you are curious about something that you're passionate about and you have a clear goal defined by like your purpose with it, that will demand, right, that real genuine amount of interest from yourself, right? That, that autonomy, that freedom to pursue that purpose is all part of it. Like it's, it's your choice. You can get in there. And then eventually like from all of that, we want to like our innate or a lot of us just want to master those skills to pursue that purpose really well. That, that all is interconnected and they all drive us into these states of deep work and flow, you know? So it's, it's awesome for that. Again, I can't state this enough. Sometimes we just got to spend time with ourselves to understand these limitations and these work habits so that we can use them to leverage them. We can leverage them to get us into that right flow state of deep work or simply help you get, you know, shit done with the time that you have. I really, it's, it's a matter of self diagnose here. You got to identify what is preventing you from creating. That's why like when, again, when some of you are like, yeah, I might have this issue here. I'm always like, okay, you bored with the subject or you just too, too challenged by it, right? That ratio of like, you know, comfortability and challenge is off and you have to just adjust the scales. For example, flow state and sustainability that that's a bit of a thing too, right? We can look at that. For me to sustain flow state, I guess as frequently as I, I do is I try to stay flexible and balanced for the most part, you know, in like the day to day, staying organized, clear sets of priorities, you know, for a given task or a block of time for the day. Um, and not multitasking. I'm that's something I, I know is something I really struggle with. I'm always trying to juggle more than one thing at once. And I consciously have to stop myself, stop myself from doing that. It's, it can be toxic for sure. And it starts to dilute the quality of all the tasks I'm trying to juggle at once. Um, I think that the less I multitask, the longer I can do something well, and well enough. Um, it, and it can, right? Because I know it, it feels like multitasking can be super deduct productive, right? Whether, you know, we're kind of moving information around, completing small tasks on the to-do. It can feel rewarding, um, but it, it does at the same, it's a double-edged sword because it prevents me from truly focusing on anything. Does anyone else kind of struggle in that boat too? It's like, oh, if I do this and this at the same time, they'll get it done. And yeah, it feels great getting stuff done. But then it's like, I could have just been focusing on this and I would have did it better. Um, then there's also like that, what's it called? Like the Pomodoro technique. And this largely contradicts the foundation of what like deep work or flow state really is. Since I think it takes, right. It was, I was, I was reading it. It takes like 20 minutes at least to probably get in a good flow state. And with this technique, it's, it's essentially has you only work in intervals of like 25 minutes, you know, taking five off intermittently, like every time. I think, you know, the thing with this is that it is based on, you know, you getting work done with the time you have rather than like those large, massive blocks. Because I think for a lot of us, you know, we don't have those large, ma uh, massive blocks to work with to begin with. Um, so it's like saying, okay, well, finally, if I get half an hour, you know, how can I get as much done as I possibly can? And this is the state of my life right now. Like I only have like these little short blocks of time. So it's like, I have to cram this particular task into that block to make sure I get it done. So I was actually kind of doing a variation on this technique anyway, and I've made it, it it's been tricky, but I've over time, of course, so the last couple of years made it work for me. So I get I jump into a task, get super focused for these short bursts. Um, really what that does is it, if you, if your lifestyle isn't like mine, it would doing a technique like this would create an artificial sense of urgency for you. So if you f find that you're kind of just your general work ethic, you're lacking in this like agency or, 
you don't have any kind of structure at all that you have to get things done by a certain amount of time. If you do that, you know, Pomodoro technique, um, ideally it may help facilitate that sense of urgency to get short bursts of focused, uh, you know, energy and work done. But I think you'll, uh, you know, at the end of the day, you're gonna have to try it for yourself, um, as we all are very different. Um, but yeah, if you, maybe if you spend too much time on things too, that, that could be a good remedy for that as well. But yeah, it's something to consider anyways. All right, guys. So we're wrapping this one up, uh, today, by the way, this has been, um, a demo. We've been doing some world building projects over on the Patreon. This is literally part like five of six. There'll be more coming after this there's more before this everybody can view it at, at the basic kind of tier if you're interested in uh, following us over there and doing more uh, but yeah this is kind of where this this one ended up here you can kind of see it up on screen that's where we just ended and basically from there I just kind of put a little more time making it a little bit more higher res see it <laughs> the, the the rough version overall took maybe like 90 minutes or so up the, which you just watched at time lapse and then I just spent some more time kind of tightening it up and as I was telling the guys in the discord it could easily just spend another six hours on this you know absolutely polishing the heck out of it but for a nice little mood sketch I'm really happy with this um, and this is kind of where I'd, I'd want to get that anyways guys if you have any questions about this process or any of the topics we covered in this video, absolutely let me know below and you have a fantastic day.